Hey, it's Pastor Dave Schreffler, pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Hummelstown. It's time to take a gander at the gospel, time to take a look at how God might be calling us through the gospel that's coming up for this particular Sunday. Uh, this is December 13th, 2020 is the date for this Sunday. It is the third Sunday in Advent. As such, we have a reading from the Gospel of St. John, uh, the first chapter, verses 6 to 8 and verses 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisee. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. So let me ask you the question, who are you? Who are you? There's a story by Dr. Seuss, one of his probably more uh, well-known stories, children's stories that he wrote uh, called Yertle the Turtle. It's about Yertle the Turtle King. Uh, just as a side note, uh, Yertle the Turtle is, uh, was written by Dr. Seuss to parallel the, the, uh, the ruler, uh, the despotic ruler, there's a good word for you, um, Adolf Hitler. Uh, but anyway, the story goes something like this. There was Yertle the Turtle King. He was king of his pond, and he decided one day that his kingdom was too small. And so wanting to expand his kingdom... He felt that his throne was too close to the ground, and so he ordered his turtle subjects to begin to stand one on another, the back of one another turtle, so that he could get further off the ground to be able to, to see more of his kingdom. And all the while, Yertle the turtle says, Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, I am the king of, no, for I am the ruler of all that I see. That's what it was. So uh, he gets up further and uh, he feels, you know, this isn't enough territory. I need to go higher. And so he tells more turtles to stand on their backs. And this continues on and on. You're, uh, oh, uh, I am Yertle the turtle. Oh, marvelous me, for I'm the ruler of all that I see. Finally, after a while, of course, some of the turtles on the bottom begin to complain, especially one turtle named Mac. And uh, finally, uh, Yertle the turtle sees the moon and he says oh, i've got to get up so i can grab the moon uh and so uh mac the little turtle at the very bottom uh gets tired of this behavior and so he leaves out a big burp and all of the turtles fall as does yertle the turtle the turtle king and he falls head first into the mud he is no longer yertle the turtle uh the turtle king right it's a good story for us to consider when we're looking at John the Baptist. So I said at the very beginning, who are you? If somebody asked you that question, how would you respond? Who are you? Many people uh, would respond by giving their name. Some might respond by giving their occupation, the kind of thing that they do. I just wonder if you have ever responded to a question like that, that you are a child of God. In our text from John's Gospel uh, for this coming Sunday, we hear John, or we hear these words. It begins with, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. We are not told John what? We are not told he's John the Baptist. We're not told he's John the Baptizer. Um, we don't have any explanation like that about John. And not only, and, and all we are told, he's, he's a man from God who is called to testify. 
And not only is he to te 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 testify or to witness, but he is to testify to the light. The witness, this man named John, has been sent by God to prepare the way of the Lord to make his paths straight. John knew, of course, that he was just a vessel. John knew that he was the messenger. He was the reporter. He was not to be the story. So when the priests and the Levites come along and they're asking John uh, who he was, John stepped out of his role as John the baptizer and he steps into the role of someone from that James Bond film, Dr. No, right? They say, are you the Messiah? He says, no. Are you Elijah? No. Are you a prophet? He says, no. John is quick to put himself behind the one that he is preparing the way for. He is putting himself behind the one who is to come. John was sent by God. He knew his place. He was to be at the bottom like that little turtle Mac. He was, again, that vessel. He was, I'm sorry to say this, but he was the stepping stone for the Messiah. He was there to help tell the story. I am the voice, John says. I am to be part of the proclaiming. I am not to be the king. As we think about it, John is not the light. He is telling us that the light is coming. And this is what Advent is all about. Advent is about uh, us proclaiming, us believing in our own lives, but also proclaiming that Jesus, the light of the world, is to come. And sometimes our world gets pretty dark that it's hard for us to see that light. I'm sure you probably have heard already by now that on December 21st, 2020, this is, of course, uh, the uh, winter solstice, but there's also this other uh, astrological event. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn's orbits are going to uh, get close enough that they are going to appear as if their R's are going to kind of merge together. It's called a conjunction when, when two uh, celestial bodies line up uh, and they're calling it the Bethlehem star. They, they believe, many believe, um, that the three wise men actually saw a triple conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. But anyway, what this will do for us, just five days, four days before Christmas, uh, will allow us to see the real mystery and the real beauty of God's creation. The light of the world did come through Jesus Christ. The light is coming again. We just can't allow the darkness of this world to um, overshadow that light. We can't allow the distractions of this world to drown out that light. We have to realize that the light of Christ has real transformational power in our lives. We just have to keep our eyes open and our ears open in these pandemic times and these difficult times to allow that light's presence to come into our very selves. Now, I said it's a transformational power. How is the light transformational for us? Well, the light illumines our lives, right? It helps us see things as they are. The Levites and the priests and the other religious, religious leaders just could not see Jesus as the light coming into the world, as the Messiah. Jesus says, the Son of Man was sent into the world not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. You see, Jesus, the light, illumines our lives with God's word. Second of all, the light guides us. Light is a miner's lifeline. Think about it. If a miner deep under the ground in the earth, without a light, the miner is completely lost in the darkness. They have no idea if they're coming or they're going. Uh, the darkness will just swallow them up. Our lives get like that sometimes. Our lives have felt like that in the last 10 months or so. Uh, we have days where we have no idea if we are coming or going. Believe in God, Jesus says. Actually, John, he's, John tells us in John 14, um, 
do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is teaching his disciples. Uh, believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus the light guides us through his words to righteousness. Jesus that light will make our paths straight. And it's something that we do not have to fear this world. Jesus the light invites us to a deeper relationship with God. Uh, if you remember that commercial for Motel 6, we'll keep the light on for you. That idea that the porch light, that, you know, there's always a porch light when we come home, you know, welcoming us so that we are met by light, not by darkness. Uh, Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. You see, Jesus, the light invites us to bathe in, in, in that light, to rest in that light. We say when somebody is baptized as part of the service, let your light so shine before others that they will see your, your good works that glorify your Father in heaven. Your light, the light of Jesus invites us into a deeper relationship with God. And light then also reveals the beauty of God. There's a song uh, from my childhood from the 70s uh, by the band the Moody Blues. Uh, the name of the song was Nights in White Satin. It was a perennial prom theme back in the 70s, the early 80s. And there's a reason I mentioned this song is there's a poem. Uh, at some point in time in that song, I can't remember if it was at the, be at the beginning or at the end, but the poem goes like this, cold hearted orb that rules the night, removes the colors from our sight, red is gray, yellow, white. You see, darkness removes the beauty of God's creation. The darkness robs it, it of its beauty of the color, the integrity. Jesus reminds us again, I am the light of the world, Jesus says. Whoever follows me will never walk, walk in darkness. So Jesus reveals to us the beauty of God that brings us light and life. So Yurt, Yurtle the Turtle King, uh, like Yurtle the Turtle King, we can get caught up in our own self-importance. Plenty of examples of people throughout the history of living people who wanted to wallow in their own self-importance, people whom you can just imagine them saying, exclaiming to others, I am Yertle the, Cur Yertle the Turtle, oh marvelous me. Advent, my friends, is about the pre-existent one, the word that was with God, the word that is God, was there at the very beginning, one we call Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ is the light. Jesus reveals to us just a fraction of what the glory of God is actually like. But for the world to know this light, we have to be the messengers to share that light with others. It began with John, but my friends, it continues with you and me. So Advent is about welcoming that light into our lives, you know, one candle at a time as we light the candles on the Advent wreath. But we are also apostles, like the other disciples became apostles, the sent out ones. We are sent out by Jesus to share the good news, to take the light of Jesus into a world that is constantly fighting the darkness that surrounds all of us. God knows who you are. You are a loved child of God. So when someone says, who are you? You know, you need to think in, in, your, head, in your head, whose am I? I am a child of God. You are a child of God. God knows the number of hairs on your head. For some of us, that's a little, uh, that's a little lower number than others. But God knows us as intimately as any father or mother knows their child. We cannot allow the fears and the darkness of this world to overshadow us, especially in, again, these months that we are fighting this pandemic. We need to allow the light of Christ to come into our lives. Again, just these words from our baptism. I want to leave you with these words. Let your light, and that light is the light of Jesus Christ that shines in your life. Let your light so shine before others that they will see your good works that glorify 
your Father in heaven. So that's what I have for this coming Sunday. Um, as we get closer to Christmas, my friends, I just ask that you take time to see how the light of Christ uh, shines in your life. Remember, it, your faith is not what theologian you follow. It's not what translation of the Bible you read. Your faith is your living, active uh, faith that you you are living every day as you encounter others. We see Christ in the faces of all of those around us, those who are in need. You know, go out and live your life that, uh, you know, be someone's thankful. And by that, I mean, you know, go out and live your life in a manner that people are thankful that you are in their life. My friends, God bless you, and I hope this helps you this week.